the debate is on the future of funding in the Nordics. Uh, we're getting more attention to Nordic startups uh, now, and we have a pretty broad panel here. Uh, we have uh, Bjorn from Symphonical, a Norwegian serial entrepreneur and, and investor. Um, we have Daniel from Funded by Me, a new uh, crowdfunding uh, um, service in uh, Sweden. We have uh, Harry from Balderton Capital. Uh, we have Two Life from North Zone. Uh, and we have Thomas, uh, who does a lot of stuff, who's also in invested in loads of companies. The first question, what are some of the reasons why you invest and don't invest in, in startups? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't consider myself an investor. So to begin with that, I don't really think I'm investing. I think we're all investing any, every day our time, our efforts, our gray hairs, our time on planet Earth in these things anyhow. I mean, uh, for me personally, it's like I basically just fell in, fall in love with stuff, you know. Then it's like I have sympathy for the, for the team, for the, the grand vision. I have somewhat an idea that the team can be moved to execute. And on that personal journey that Pierre's talking about, which uh, the team hates me for afterwards because then I'm all about their personal de development. Um, so for me, I mean, but I'm also pretty gonzo about it. So I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot, there's a big market, there's all that stuff. But ultimately at the end of the day, I'm gonna work really fucking hard with these guys for a couple of years together. They need to be guys that I wanna go out and drink beer with, have a good time with, and guys I wanna see win. Very good. I think the reason to invest is uh, to make money. It's simple as that. Uh, but if you can have fun along the way, that's uh, even better. But uh, that's what it's all about. But I like having one comment about the Nordic scene because I just saw some statistics that which uh, draws more and more attention from around the world. And the Nordics is about 8% of the population in Europe. We attract about 15, 1-5% of uh, VC funding. But the last 15 years, we created 30% of the returns. So it's clear that the Nordic region is uh, okay. <laughs> the Nordic region is is a hub for innovation, and more and more people realize it. Uh, it's uh, Nordics and it's London. There's a lot of buzz around Berlin these days. Has been for a couple of years. I haven't seen much coming out of it really so far. It might happen. Uh, I hope so. But but still, you guys should be confident that if you have a great business and if you have high ambitions, you can draw attention from all around the world. But that being said, uh, there are some great investors here in the Nordics as well, so you don't have to go too far. <laughs> so Harry, is that one of the reasons why you're here as well? Uh, def definitely. Um, is this working? Sorry, yeah. Uh, so I guess, um, I mean, answering the first question, uh, what do we look for? Uh, we look for um, great people. I mean, it all comes down to the people, entrepreneurs. The world is changing way too fast to back an idea. You've got to back a team that can keep on staying ahead of the curve, that know more about what they're doing and care more about it and are gonna fight more for it than anyone else on the planet. So that's number one. Um, and then I guess, you know, is it a huge market? Is it something we're excited about? Is it something that's disruptive and, and, and interesting? It's gonna be fun, as you say. But in terms of the Nordics, um, yeah, I think the Nordics have so much going for them and that's why I'm here and why uh, Balderton are often in Stockholm and Helsinki and other cities in the region, uh, is that um, here you've got a lot of talented, a lot of great schools, a lot of talented people, a lot of uh, uh, ambition. Um, and, you know, what uh, the, the, I feel like a greater ratio of those people um, want to start great businesses here than you find in Paris or Madrid or, sorry if you're any, French people here and so forth, but uh, the, the, there's a greater proportion of those, ta those talented people are starting businesses with global ambitions. And I think that combined with you know, some of the national characteristics here, people who work hard, people who are very honest, people who have attention to detail and want to make the best designed product, um, those other factors, uh, you know, combined to make businesses like Carl's business that we, that we, that we invested in, take down. Very good. What about um, Daniel? You got a little bit of a different yeah, background. Um, so. Is this on? So, uh, thank you for the introduction. We're not just Swedish, actually. We are Nordics. We are just about to launch in Norway right now. So, uh, what, what I'm doing with, with equity crowdfunding is that I basically help you guys in this room, it's like, what, 250 people, to be business angels. So, basically, you can invest in all the companies you see around you. Uh, and also, of course, to take your idea to the market far, far faster than 
uh, knocking on VC or angel doors. We love angels and we love VCs, of course, but it takes a lot of time and they, they don't meet so many people and they invest in very few. So I think, and I know for a fact, that a lot of you guys in this room might be the next big thing. So you should have a huge chance. And on the other hand, a lot of you people in this room should be able to invest in the next big thing and without, of course, to be, uh, have to be millionaires. So that's what Funding One B does. So we basically facilitate two needs. One, taking to the market of growing fast, and on the other hand, people who actually want to be part of the next big thing. Uh, it goes well. We raised so far uh, 17 point something millions since November. Um, so it goes really, really well. And, and the good thing is that it's, it's a market validator, basically. You test your idea on a live market, you get money and you get an audience and best of all, you get your future clients to be part of your company. They become your ambassadors while you actually build your company, which is a bit un 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 undone, but it's one of the best ways to take your idea to the market. So that's what we do. We are Norwegian. <laughs> So can you, can you, before we move on to Bjorn, can you share what are some of the most common um, sort of investment opportunities on your site? Well, I can tell you right now, we have, uh, I actually can't, am I, I'm, uh, I can't tell you. Ah, you can't promote. Um, it's Too many people in the audience. Yeah, it? exactly. It's more than 200 people, so I can't. All right. No, but the thing is like this, we, uh, not every idea should open a round in front of me. So what we have done is that we have something called a pre-round, which is basically a low entry threshold. So you can easily put your idea on the market, test it, validate it, and see if you should actually open a round. Tens, hundreds, thousands of people show their interest. And if you decide that you or you or you should join, then you open the round. So it's basically a... Uh, 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 we, we, we give you the opportunity to, to, to make an educated guess or an educated decision if you even should open the, your, the round or not. So we have, I think right now, 10 to 6 open round, uh, pre-rounds. Um, a lot of cool stuff, everything from tech stuff to sound stuff to, to nerd genes to... Um, no, the sky's the limit, basically. Very good. Bjorn, you have an extensive background as an entrepreneur and uh, you've raised uh, quite a bit of money in your previous uh, ventures. What were some of the reasons, um, sort of, in your opinion, why they invested in you and uh, some that, when, when you were turned down, what were the reasons? Well, <clears throat> I think the reasons why you get started, because that's the important part, you have to find a need in the market, which you didn't. You just started something, and I love you for that. You know, that's, that's cool. But you would never get money from a VC that way, of course. Never. But that's the most fun part you could do. But that need needs to be so strong. It needs to be a frustration. I was frustrated with my previous job at AC Nielsen. I was so frustrated. I, little Bjorn, could do better than AC Nielsen with 30,000 people. I happened to be right at that time. Uh, because they were so slow, they were so moving so slowly and did everything, you know, I was so frustrated. I could do this better. I was 25, I had no money. And you have to have a passion. You have to be frustrated about a goal. You have to have a passion and you can never give up. Then I became successful a couple of times, first with feedback and then with confirm it and had all of a sudden money on my own that I could invest in other people. And then if you want to invest to be rich, you're so wrong. Because money is not the goal, it's a yardstick. But then again, you're so right. Because it can't be, you can't live with just uh, honor. Money is like oxygen. It's not the goal of your life, but you can't live without it. But to only go after money, that's wrong. So you have to have the drive, the passion, and of course the people, and then the, ma the money will follow if you have that, but you can't go after the money first. Don't ever forget that, or else you will have a miserable life and work with finance. I, I, I had to comment on that with those that was not what I meant. He asked why are investors like you investing in startups? And obviously we have our investors and they did money return, so that was sort of making the point, but uh, I agree with you. But it's all about, you know, if you set up a company, you want to hire the best people out there. 
but you also want to have the best investors. And the yeah. best investors, they don't only provide money, for right. sure. Absolutely. You want something to be there, somebody to be there as a sparring partner, as an inspiration, and somebody that can challenge you. And the best entrepreneurs, they often have a choice. And if they can choose about uh, you know, a brand name VC from the US, they tend to do that. And that's not always right, because maybe you have an institution, but it's all about the people. And you get probably one partner on board, and if you don't like that guy, if he's an arrogant bastard, you don't want to have it on board, because it's a pretty close marriage. So t think about the people, think what they can add, and flying in on board meetings every three months, I think that also is, uh, is the wrong thing. You should be you know, close and, 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 and uh, talk to the guys and be there with them. I, so, I totally uh, agree. Definitely, but if you don't make money, you cannot you know, be sustainable. But uh, there's a lot more. more. You run out of so. oxygen, you die. Yeah. This is going to be the easiest panel moderation ever. <laughs> <laughs> Such great people on board. Um, okay, one last question, actually. We're running, running uh, low on time almost, but uh, I'll give you one minute each, and, and sort of you're all, to my understanding, pretty well-traveled gentlemen uh, around the world, so you know uh, the sort of startup and entrepreneurship um, sort of qualities of entrepreneurs and companies elsewhere and, and also in the region. So just to briefly summarize, maybe in like one minute per person, uh, 